The annual meetings may be over, but the conversations and work go on. Let's look back. The World Bank Group President David Malpass struck a hopeful note in his opening remarks. There's an urgency to what we're doing uh, because of the challenges uh, facing development. Part of it is global growth is slowing, uh, investment is sluggish, manufacturing activity is soft, and trade is weakening. The challenges of climate change and fragility are making poor countries more vulnerable. Here's the good news. Broad-based growth is possible for countries uh, with the right mix of policies and structural reforms, countries can unleash growth that's broadly shared across all segments of society. Hello, I'm Daniel Calaca from Rio de Janeiro, Brazil. I'm from Benin. I'm from Bangladesh. I'm from Sierra Leone. I am from Uganda. As we welcome people from around the world to our headquarters here in Washington, D.C., we focus on the experience of individual countries and what is really working on the ground. I'm 25 years old and I run a tech startup out of Lagos, Nigeria. I am running a tech startup in, in Nigeria and across Africa has never been easier, but globally, relatively, it's incredibly hard. Perhaps there's no bigger opportunity as that as supporting bright females. Today, in my part of the world, less than 10% of startups are launched by female founders. The economies would basically double once we fix that disparity. From 2010, we had a great project to supply water in all the districts, and now we are at 98% uh, of achieving the target. One of the biggest moments of the meetings was the unveiling of a new education target that could make a real difference in the lives of children around the globe. Wiping out learning poverty, defined as the percentage of children who can't read and understand a basic story by the age of 10, is an urgent matter. It's a key to eliminating poverty in general and to boosting shared prosperity. It's a key to helping children achieve their potential. That's why we're setting a new target today of cutting in half, at least in half, the global level of learning poverty. What we want from you all as leaders is to listen to our voices and support our education as a priority. Children and Ruth are the future. When we are educated, we are the ones who can make change and make the world better. Another theme running through the meetings was economic inclusion. How we help those most in need to participate in the economy. That's essential to successful development. Most of the extreme poor are living in, uh, in fragile states and the number of fragile states have been increasing. And if we want to make any progress on combating poverty, you will have to concentrate on fragile states. If we want to uh, prevent, we will need to give hope also to the people who are affected. And that means they need jobs, they need a future. In Africa, we need to create 1.7 million jobs every month, every month. So we know one thing, Business as usual is not going to do it. Si nous arrivons à éliminer, if we manage to eliminate inequality, gender inequality, in terms of employment, in terms of the status of women, or several aspects of this gender inequality, that would allow us to increase our GDP in 2030 by 25 percent. That is huge. In almost every session, speakers highlighted the urgent need to support the bank's fund for the poorest countries, IDA the International Development Association. Uh, AIDA resources are very important for us. Somalia without AIDA uh, will be very difficult to, to come back from the difficulties that it has been through. Ici, nous devons reconnaître que ça touche aux couches les plus pauvres de population sur la planète. Et donc, euh, par nos décisions, nous devons savoir que nous touchons à la vie de chaque femme, de chaque homme, de chaque enfant. And that's just a flavor of some of the important conversations that just happened. 
If you missed a session or want to dive deeper, catch up on every minute at World Bank Live.